All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. As always, if you learned something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. You can also follow me on the gram at Anthony Smoke Data. So today we are in SQL Server. So I want to show you how to use the lag and lead functions in SQL, specifically the lag function as I use that to solve a recent business question. So I want to start out showing you this little data set and we're going to tackle this issue in Excel first just so you get a feel for the data. Then we'll move over to SQL Server. Isn't that usually how things go? Something gets thrown at you, you have to do it in Excel for maybe a proof of concept, and then you need to scale up the solution. Uh, you don't want to do manual work, so you move over to a database. So let me show you uh, how this, uh, this data set uh, is put together so we can tackle the problem in Excel. Okay, so let's take a look at this data set. I've got a little tiny data set here. We've got invoice numbers. You can see this is an invoice. And, you know, I've got two other invoices, very small, two rows here. But uh, there's an approval process for the invoices. It has to move through these different states. Someone has to approve the invoice. It's created. You can see they all have the same create date for the same invoice. But it has to go through the process. So there's a time. So let's say I do this. I say equal this date minus the previous date, right? That's like the lag function in SQL. It'll give me a calculation. So looking at this, I can see, yeah, there was 15 days between that uh, approval process. But I'm just gonna switch it up just a little bit here because we have to account for the first step in the process that may not have a previous approval date. So let's do something like this. Um, and again, this was a uh, business process or business problem, I should say, uh, that I had to solve uh, in SQL. But I'm just showing you in Excel um, what the data looks like first. So let's do this. So we'll say if, and I don't want to put it here. Let's start. Uh, it'll make it easier if I put it here. So if my invoice number is equal to the previous invoice number, meaning I'm on the same invoice, then I want to perform this calculation. I want to know how much time is approved between this step and the previous step, these two dates. If there is no previous invoice or the previous invoice was a different invoice, then I wanna know the, um, the approved date minus the create date, how much time occurred there. So if I do that, this feels right. So if I look at this, even though I don't have a previous invoice, I can see there's about five and a half days here uh, between when the invoice was created and when it was approved. So anyway, once I have, and I know this is right because I calculated this beforehand, that, that looks right. And so once I have this, I can answer the question, you know, someone comes to me, hey, how much time on average did it take to move through each of the approval steps? So on this first invoice, it was about three and a third days. Or I'm sorry, yeah, three and a third days. So 0.33 days is about eight hours, right? A third of a day. And so on, so forth here. And when we get to the grand total, it's about four and a half days uh, for all on average for all of our uh, invoices um, to get through their approval process. So. Let's do this in SQL. I just wanted to show you the logic in, in Excel first because it's easier to comprehend. But now we're going to use SQL Server. We're going to use the lag function to do the same thing. All right, let's take a look at my database here. I have this uh, information in a table called invoice example. So let's go ahead and run this, see what we can see. You can see it's the same information that we had in Excel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna introduce you to the lag function. So there's a lag function. And so what do I want to lag? I have to give it a column. So I want to lag the invoice number. So let's take the invoice number and put that there. And so in the next argument is an offset. So I wanna look back previously, right? Think of lag as like a time machine. I'm, I'm looking back, right? I wanna look back one row. So that's my offset. And then you can give it a, uh, a default value. Uh, let's give it a null. So it's a placeholder value in the event of an unavailable lagged row. So I'm just gonna put that there. And so you have to use the lag with the over uh, clause 
And I have a whole video, I'm going to give you the link in description of the difference between partition by and group by. Go check out that video. I'm not going to get too deep into it here, but we're going to use over. And we don't have to use partition. I'm going to use partition by just to show you. Uh, and then I'll, I'll take it out if I can spell. We're going to partition by the invoice number. Let's go ahead and put that here. And we will order by, we want to make sure this is in the right order. We need to order by our invoice number and the approval order. So I want to make sure it's in the right order. We want to sort by the invoice number and the approval order. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. We're going to put the approval order there as well. Just going to copy that over, close that up, and let's call this previous invoice. So this is really just going to get me the previous invoice. And so if I run this, let's see what happens. Uh, all right, so you see it worked. So now let's take a look. We have a previous invoice field, and it makes sense that there's nothing here because there's nothing previous. There's no previous invoice, and all of these are on the same invoice. And because I'm using partition by, I'm partitioning by the invoice number. When I get to the next invoice, it says, hey, there isn't a previous, you know, O2, so I'm going to put null here. But on this, on the second um, uh, invoice, the second uh, approval order on the same invoice, it gives me O2. It looked back and it saw O2. Same thing with the O3. So that's what happens when I have partition by here. So watch what happens if I take partition by out, just so you can see the difference. And I just have the order by. So let's run that again. And you'll say, hey, uh, now we get a value for every row except for the first row. So even when I switch over to O2 here, whoop, can't highlight that, can I? Yes, I can. So now when I switch over uh, to O2, it looks back and gives me O1, which, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense for my calculations because I need to do, do the same thing for the approved date. So just showing you what the difference is, what the partition does, it kind of breaks it up into a partition. So it's smart enough to say, oh, okay, um, I'm only going to partition by the invoice number. I'm not going to perform the look back um, when I get to a new invoice number because you've partitioned by invoice number. So hopefully that, that makes sense. So I'm just going to take this same line here. And instead of the invoice number, I want the invoice approved date, right? So let's go ahead and take the invoice approved date. Just want to show you how we can get these on the same line. Uh, there's the invoice uh, approved date. And same thing, nothing to change here except for previous yeah, we'll just call it previous invoice approved date. And, you know, you get the you put the brackets in here when you don't um, uh, when you don't have a uh, connector. So we'll do something like that. Invoice uh, previous invoice approved date. And if I run this, you'll see um, I get the previous uh, invoice approved date, as you can see. 110, 110 here, 114, 114. It's looking back and giving you that previous invoice approved date. So that is the lag function, right? It's, it's that simple. If I wanted to, we could change this to lead. And so it would give me just the opposite. So let's go ahead and put in lead here. And if I run this, we can take a look at the results. Let's go over here. You'll see... Um, I'm looking forward now. So now this invoice approved date of 110 is looking forward to the 114 row, and it's putting that there. When we get to the last row in the invoice, it's saying, you know what? I don't see anything because we're partitioning by our invoice number. So I really don't see anything. There isn't anything for me to look forward to, so I'm going to put null here. So that's how that works. Same thing on the second one here. Hey, I don't see another 002, so you get nothing. You get null. So that's how the lead and the lag function works. So if you need to stop here, you can stop here. You know how lead and lag works. But if you want to carry on with me into, bonus, into the bonus uh, round here, I'm going to show you uh, how we calculate those average um, 
uh, invoice approval times. So stick around. All right, here we are, bonus time. Let's take a look at this query here that gets us back to our uh, average duration by invoice as we calculated in Excel. So uh, you can see this is the query that we just created. Um, we're just putting on each row the previous invoice, right? If it doesn't have a previous invoice, nothing is there, it's null. And we're putting in the previous approved date, as you can see here, right, 110. Um, uh, 110, 2023, 110, 2023. Okay, so now what is a CTE? So I just put this in CTE format. And so CTEs basically help simplify a query by using a temporary named result set. So CTE stands for common table expression. So I just put this in a CTE and you can chain CTEs together. So just imagine that this is saved in a temporary, it's not like a temp table because it's only, uh, it's eliminated after query execution. So it doesn't stay in memory. But for our purposes, let's, let's pretend that this sticks around and we can reference it. So in CTE2, if you're going to double up on CTEs, put a comma there. In CTE2, this is where I perform that, um, if we go back to the uh, Excel, this is where I performed this logic here, the look back um, based upon a case statement here. So if I'm on the first um, uh, approval order row, then I need to do the invoice approved date minus the, uh, the created date. If I'm on a subsequent row, then I can look back. So basically, I'm just doing that with the case statement. So so let's take a look at CTE2. You can chain your CTEs together. You just put a comma after your first one. And then in CTE2, I can reference the first CTE. So I'm taking everything from the first CTE, from these results, and then I'm just making one calculation here. So this is the uh, approval duration calculation, just like we did in Excel. So all I'm saying is I'm using a case statement when the previous invoice is not null, meaning there's a previous invoice there. So if I'm on the third approval order here, when the previous invoice is not null, which means, hey, there's a, there's a second approval order here, then what I can do is calculate the difference between the invoice approved date and the previous invoice approved date, right? So I've got the invoice approved date, I've got the previous invoice approved date, all in the same line, that's great, yay. I can do my calculation. So I calculate that date difference in seconds. So it's gonna give me a, a, you know, a big number. And then I divide it by 86,400. So I get down to days. That's how many seconds are in a day. So it'll give me like a you know, three point something. So I calculate that. Then I just round it. So we just wrap that in a round. I round that to, to two de decimal places. And then I cast it as a, a decimal. So that's what happens when I have um, a previous value, right? When the previous invoice is not null. So what happens when the previous invoice is null? I can't you know, do the calculation because I don't have a value here. So um, I'm just looking at the difference between the invoice approved date and the invoice created date. So on this row, I would look at the difference between the approved date and the created date. And that would be, that would be in my approval duration calculation. So I could run this. So let's do this. I have to select CTE one and two together. If I do that, you'll see, if I scroll over, there's my duration, right? That looks, that looks really clean. So if I, let me scroll up here, 55397-1507, if we go back into uh, Excel, if I bring that over, 55397, here, let's just do one of these, bam. I can see that these are identical. So I'm performing the same calculation in SQL as I'm doing in Excel. And so there's one more step. We'll just aggregate all of this up by invoice. Okay, I'm explaining the last step here. I'm just gonna comment this out because we don't need it. And so now I'm referencing from CTE2. I'm selecting just the invoice number. And we're going to uh, average our approval duration that we calculated in CTE2. We're going to call that average invoice duration days. And I actually don't need this because I am using underscores here. From CTE2, we're going to group by invoice number, and that'll give us our overall number. 
and it doesn't like me here because I didn't select everything. So if you're going to use CTEs, you have to remember to select everything. So I'm just going to hit run here and you'll see I get my values. And that is going to align with what we had in Excel. If I could uh, make this look pretty decent here, you'll see um, that I'm aligning up 3.33. 7.81, 5.81. And if I were to take the group by out here, I'm sure this would be 4.49 if I wanted to take out this uh, invoice number here and take out the group by invoice number and run all of this. There's my 449. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough. I showed you how to do things on the Excel side of the house. A real business problem, right? Um, showed you how to do that on the Excel side of the house. Showed you how to do this on the SQL Server side of the house. Hopefully you know about lead and lag now. Make sure to watch my video on uh, partition by versus group by. And make sure you ring that bell again if you enjoyed and learned something new. So this has been Anthony Smoke as always. Get out there, do some great things with your data. Stay data driven as well. Thanks for watching everyone.